We have students that have finished their exams and we are happy, we have hope, we have patience. Perhaps you have hearty, you're on the way and the rest of the others. Then we want to appreciate also the victory. We want to appreciate the Lord for the victory he's given us. Amen. All the students in our midst pass their exams. Yes. We, we also have Brother Ken, a pastor in Kisumu whose son also passed, right? Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate you and we are, we are happy to. And where is Peter? You also passed your exam. We are happy to see you too. Welcome. Happy to see this family right here. So we greet in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ once more. Amen. We want to go to the script. Thank you for your prayers. I'm whole. Thank you, Jesus. And I got some, uh, was talking to me yesterday, and then I, I was getting the call from home. So I thought maybe my dad is a little bit more unwell than I had known before. But the message was, no, he's okay. We've just walked and we've just talked. I said, only sickness of one day to derail us from this? No. Maybe the devil wants to hit us sort of interfere with our confidence but today we are here by the grace of god Amen. father in the mighty name of jesus christ we come before you again we are so grateful again father for this time you've given us father as the song goes we have a father that will never fail us lord Amen. how true that is oh god Amen. we can't agree more that's what it is lord Amen. we are so grateful today father we invite you again we want to thank you for the victory you've given your people, not only those who are here with us, but those who are spread across the globe, oh Father. Amen. They've got something they want to tell you about. Amen. We're so grateful to you, Father. We invite you again. We want to appreciate you for the visitors in our gates. May you bless us together, Father, in this, oh God. Amen. Father, unite our spirits to love you, to move closer to you, even if, Father, to accept and believe Amen. what you've already given us. Amen. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, I want us to go straight to our scripture reading today from uh, the book of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. And then Amos chapter 3, verse 2. Are you ready for the scriptures? Because we have a lot of scriptures today. Uh, I was telling my wife, just pray for me because I want to move very fast. We have a lot that we want to capture in a short while. But these things are meant to, to dovetail with all that we've been dealing with. Even last Sunday, the message we had on last Sunday, the message we're going to have next Sunday, and this Sunday, they're all linked together. And uh, by the grace of God, I want you to stay closer with me. I hope you're studying the Bible more than ever before in your life. Amen. Uh, amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 14. Ephesians, you realize Ephesians really plays a very big role in the scriptures. Very, very big role in the Pauline letters, the 13 letters that Paul wrote from Romans to Philemon, Ephesians is a great thing right there. There are divisions in the scriptures and we want to deal with another division in the scriptures. Where do we get the word the division? We get it from 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. Amen. Study thyself. Does it say that? Study and show thyself approved of God. Amen. A man that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. That means in the Bible there are divisions. And if you are not on the right side of the division, you will fail. Amen. We know very well that a Syrophoenician woman failed in dividing the word of truth. Amen. She's standing there. Her solution to her challenge is right there. But she called Jesus by a wrong name. The same, same Jesus. But this Jesus, Paul says, Jesus divided. He was talking to the Corinthians. But when we come to Jesus and the children of Israel and the Gentiles, we realize there are divisions. It's only Paul who knew how to remove that. Amen. And heaven is a place. Heaven and earth is like two mansions of the same house, separated by a curtain. But with the time, the curtain will be removed. And you see the people feeding on the other side of the table, and the people on this side are one. Amen. There is a program and an age for that. Amen. There will be a time when this curtain is completely removed. The Bible calls it the ages to come. Amen? Amen. So that we shall be one person. Right now there are divisions, there is a dispensation, there is a dealing. If we confuse that, like I said last Sunday, then you'll have 
people getting blessed today, receiving the Holy Ghost today, having signs and wonders in their life today. And then it's like, why are you getting the signs and wonders today when the channel that God purposed to bless the earth has never received the blessing yet? God purposed to use Israel to influence the earth and the nations. That is in Exodus chapter 12, right? So there would have never been anyone getting blessed on earth if there was no any other thing that God introduced on earth. And that thing is you. Amen. If that thing God never brought it through Paul in Acts chapter 9, we, there would never be Christians today confessing Jesus. For 2,000 years from the time Israel was scattered, we would still be waiting for them to be blessed so that we can be blessed as well. But there is something that has come up. And this thing makes us, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, we have full access to God. Full. Amen. Full access Amen. without Amen. nothing in between. Amen. And that's what God has done. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. Let me not begin from there. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14. Our message today is the family in heaven and the family on earth. While you are thinking the family in heaven could be angels, then another question tells you, how can an angel be a family if he has not been born or birthed by him? The angels were created. They are not the children of God. We could call like that before a new birth came. After the new birth came, we must have really children of God. Ephesians 3, 14 and 15. Verse 13. Wherefore I desire that you offend not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Paul is talking about the family in heaven is named Jesus, and the family on earth is also named Jesus. So he said the family in heaven is named Jesus, the family on earth is named Jesus. So it's a high time to find out if you are a family of God, where do you belong? Are you a family in heaven or a family on earth? If you are a family on earth, where is your inheritance? If you are a family in heaven, where is your inheritance? Amos 3.2. Can hear you say, oh, Amos 3, 7. Because that's the thing that really stuck in your mind. <laughs> this idea of picking one verse in the entire chapter and building a doctrine without the flowing truth is a mistake. And we've been victims of that. And that's how we could find ourselves calling ourselves evening light assembly. If someone tells you, can you read Zechariah chapter 14? You realize the, the life that is promised in Zechariah 14 happens after Jesus has put his feet on Mount Olives. After the nations have fought, and that is long after the rapture has already taken place. And the evening light doesn't shine to us. The evening light shines after some darkness has come to the earth. And this evening light has a timeline what God wants to achieve during that time. We call ourselves evening light because someone just picked a small scripture and gave it to you. without reading the whole floor, looking at the person that is coming in Revelation 10 and looking for the same person elsewhere in the entire Bible, how he visited the children of Israel and how he looked like. Amen. And then realize this attribute of Revelation 10 can only pin to either the family in heaven or the family on earth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. When you come across, you wonder who is this man that the Bible says he's standing at the gate and he's knocking. Why don't you take time to look at his face? The person that is standing at the gate knocking, how does his face look like? If the face has got eyes like flames of fire as it is written in Daniel 10, and his feet like brass, this man is moving in judgment. He can't be addressing grace people. While he's dressed like this, Amen. he must have been ready to move in judgment. Amen. That's why his eyes are flames of fire. Amen. 
and he must be coming to give out people the last chance. He's saying, this time I came, a humble servant. Today I've come in judgment. You either accept me or you are destroyed. Amen. This is the same man we found in Revelation chapter 19. And I saw heaven open. And I saw one whose eyes were like flames of fire. And in his mouth was sharp sword. Amen. Amen. This man is moving in judgment. And you want to say he is coming to bless you? You do not know the family in heaven and the family on earth Amen. and their visitation. Amen. Amen. We've already preached, right? Yes. We have our visitation. They, the children of Israel, have their visitation from God. And I'll give you some points here. Where is Amos? I can hear someone say, Amos is found under the mystery of God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. It says, Amos 3, is it? What did it say? Amos what? 3 2. Amos 3 2 says, Hear the, this word that the Lord has spoken against you. That's verse 1. All children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only. Have I known of all the families of the earth? God is only talking of one family. And he's saying it is Israel. And then he tells them, because you are the only family I know. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So this time, how many families? You may be seated. God bless you. At this time, how many families do we have on earth? At the time when Amos chapter 3 verse 2 is written. God says... You are the only family. There is only one family at this time. So when Paul comes and tells us the family in heaven is named Jesus and the family on earth is named Jesus. It means we must find out where did this other family come from. Then when you go to Amos 3, 7 where it says the Lord God shall no, do nothing. But he revealed this secret to his servant, the prophets. Then, brother, we are actually saying there are things the prophet of the Old Testament didn't know anything about. And that's why Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10, this mystery that was hid in God, never known to men. But he says, never known to the sons of men. We are talking today on the family in heaven and the family on earth. If you were to begin, Hosea chapter 3 verse 2 tells us God is addressing Israel. He wants to correct them. And he is telling them, you are the only family that I know on earth. This is one man who is so disappointed. He is saying, if it's not you, who else do I have? You are the only family I have on earth. Therefore, I will correct you. That was shortly before Paul came to introduce another family. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. The family, God says in the Old Testament, you are the only family that I knew in all the family of the earth. So if you are messing like this, what do you want me to do? You, I have blessings. And these blessings, I must have a channel to bring them to the earth. Amen. And the only people I have to bring the, the blessing to the earth, it is you, Israel. At one given time, God came and said, through Moses, let my people Israel go. Israel is my firstborn. Did he say that? Yes. Did he call Israel the firstborn? And if he called Israel the firstborn, I want to tell you, you don't talk of a firstborn if you don't have other children. Amen. Israel is the firstborn among the nations. Because according to the scriptures, nation will have their visitation through Israel. But you, you will have a visitation. A visitation through the Lord Jesus Christ by grace. Amen. So Israel was the first family that God knew on earth. Amen. And Israel is failing God. And God is telling them, if I began on a hard note, that you are the only family that I knew. I will punish you. When you talk about a family, you are automatically talking about a marriage. You are talking about some time in life when our marriage began. So you can't fail to talk about a wedding. 
You can't fail to talk about a vow. You can't fail to talk about the time when they entered into family relationship with God. Amen. 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 These nations we have on earth today, the only way they can secure their blessing from heaven is to be told on how to treat Israel as a nation. Amen. It will only take a preacher to tell you, guys, your blessing is coming. You had better correct yourself because God has considered you in blessing the earth. That's why Micah chapter 4 verse 1, you see chapter 4 verse chapter 3. It talks about that time the nations will come to the children of Israel and tell them, let us go together with you to Jerusalem so that there we may know the Lord. There is a blessing that is being given. Those will be the nations coming to Israel. But you, you are not going to come through Israel. Something has happened that has birthed you to independently stand before God and ask whatever you want. Amen. Because the access is no longer through Israel. We shall see that in future. We may not see that, we may repeat that. Because some of these things we have to repeat them. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now one of the things like we saw last Sunday. What was our message last Sunday? The El Elyon and the mystery of the heaven and the earth. Amen. Then we realize, let me just background a little bit. We realize the devil did not just want to come and fight the people. No. The Bible says in Isaiah 14, 14, he wanted to be like the most high God. And the most high God is called in the Bible El Elyon. Most high God equals to El Elyon. And the name that God assigns to his nature or to his personality reveals what he wants to do. When he calls himself Jehovah Rapha, it is because he wants to heal someone. Amen. Amen? Amen. If he calls himself Jehovah Sham, it is because he wants his presence to be felt on earth. Amen. If he calls himself Jehovah Zikenu, it is because he has declared man a sinner. Amen. He must have declared a person that you are, you are clothed or your garment is filled with rags. Amen. I want to give you mine. That's why the attribute under which I'm coming to you, Amen. it is Jehovah Zikenu. I want to give you my righteousness. Amen. That's why I'm coming with that banner. I'm Amen. coming with that emblem Amen. and it's written, Amen. Jehovah is our righteousness. Amen. So whatever name God assigns himself to himself, reveals what he wants to do at that time. Amen. So if you go to what we call the seven churches, that many people have called a period. You will be shocked the way he addresses every church reveals where he is at that time. Amen. You could take some time to go and read Revelation chapter 2. And you'll understand what Scofield did in the fourth note. And what Larkin did. And you will disapprove all those people. Because from this is what has formed a greater part of so-called the message of the hour. So someone who does not realize such a book existed will come and say, the prophet said, the prophet said. When he said something, someone said, and that thing was even wrong. I'll prove to you that when he comes down to address himself, that would have been another message. Show something else. He says, that saith he whose eyes are like flame of fire. And it does that, the Tyra, the church is talking about. So when you go to each address in the seven churches, that one will tell you, I am not the audience here. Amen. 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 When you go to the first church called Ephesus, and he said, in fact, he begins in the middle of a relationship. You have forgotten your first love. Young men here, they're not married. They call themselves the, is it the deeps? They call themselves the system. So this young man who are not married, my friend, I don't want to mention your name. They say, okay, that's okay. You go to a young lady and you tell her, you've forgotten your first love. She asks you, what do you mean I forgot my first love? There, there was never a love to begin with. Amen. And when he begins with the Ephesus, he says, you've forgotten your first love. Which love was there before me and you? Amen. How can you even assign salvation to the first address of the church. This is in the middle of a relationship. Amen. This is a husband complaining of a lost love. Amen. So when you come and say, Ephesus, here is the plan of it. First of all, a mystery opens. 
The messenger catches the, the, the mystery that has not been revealed. He goes out. Those who get saved, they are sealed. Those who reject, they are judged. That is the temporal of judgment. What are you telling us? There is no salvation right there in Ephesus. It is a husband complaining. And that verse can be pulled from the Old Testament when the woman forgot her first love. Amen. What we are seeing in what you call the seven churches are things that must be pulled from Old Testament. Amen, 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 amen. You don't come to a girl and tell her you've forgotten your first love. You should be taken to a psychiatrist. Sure. This is in the middle and that is the first address. So you have to go before the first love. When you come and say this is salvation, there is no salvation. Those are what's paradigm kind of measurement. Amen. He that overcometh, he that overcometh. Who is this that is overcoming? Who is this that is overcoming? The Bible says it's our faith that overcometh. He says you have overcome the wicked one. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Amen. So when he comes and says you've forgotten your first love, and you say that's the first age. Why did it begin in the middle of a statement? Well, who failed God? That's what you want to see even today. Although that's not the direction. I have more than 10 sermons while I'm standing here. So many of them, time fails us. Out of these you preachers who are here, you can get the four sermons that I'm preaching. Let me begin by saying this. God had a, had a purpose of the heaven and the earth. Amen. Before God created the heaven, he existed alone. So you can't say heaven is the dwelling place of God. No. God still lived and existed before there was a heaven. Amen. And when he created the heaven and the earth, he had a purpose for the heaven and a purpose of the earth. Amen. 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 And I want to tell you something if you are writing it down. The book of Genesis talks about the heaven and the earth. The book of Revelation talks about the new heaven and the new earth. So we are standing between the old heaven and the new heaven. The old earth and the new earth. So let me say this for you, some of you is writing. There is a mystery between, between the old heaven. Oh God. There is a mystery. Between the old heaven and the new heaven. There is a mystery between the old earth and the new earth. Because we see in the book of Revelation, there is the old earth and the old heaven. And in the new revelation, the book of Revelation says, and the old and the earth had passed away. And I saw a new earth and I saw a new heaven. Because the old heaven and the old earth had passed away. And I want to go ahead of myself. There is something between the old heaven and the new heaven. And that thing that is in between is the reason the new heaven comes to surface. If that thing was not there, there would have never been a new heaven. And there is something between the old earth and the new earth. If that thing would have not been there, there would have never been a new earth and a new heaven. Perhaps you are the thing. Between the old heaven and the new heaven. So if you are not there, the program of the new heaven would not have come. That's a point to bond. I didn't want to sweat. I wanted to stay like this for some time. You know, we, we, we blacks have issues. I was with my, my interpreter in Brazil. When I looked, we all in white. After we remove our shirt after the pulpit, his shirt was just as white. But mine was like you can even plant some corn on the collar. Because of the color, you have the coloring, is it? What do you call it? The man? Uh, we have so much of it. So I told him, when you see this, this does not mean uh -uh. it means the color of my makeup. For him, it's like his shirt is. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So I don't want to melanine my. Now these two things that we are seeing here, as I introduce this, because you are going to end in the book of Revelation, so just follow me very closely. The heaven and the earth 
The reason why there is a new heaven and a new earth, it goes to show there was a program to bring the old heaven to the new heaven. Amen. Or a program to bring the old earth to the new earth. When those programs are completed, it is Jesus Christ who is going to have preeminent in both places. It will be Jesus in heaven and Jesus on earth. Amen. And the program in between is called redemption. Amen. Are, we, are we together? Now, we re well, someone says, can you repeat that? Okay, I'm repeating. I know the person who said that. I know, I could tell you who has said repeat. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. The program of the heaven and the program of the earth. The reason why we have the all earth and then the all heaven. It is not just something that came about. It means there was a program to make this earth to become a new earth. And if we have a new heaven, it means there was something to make the all heaven to become the new heaven. And that is the thing on which the battles of the devil are pegged upon. Amen? Amen. Did you get what I said? The devil himself, the Bible says in Isaiah 14, 14, he said he wanted to ascend on the clouds and be like the most high God. Most high God means the possessor of the heaven and the earth. And even the possessor of the heaven and the earth, the devil did not want to become a Jehovah Shalom. He wanted to become El Elyon so that he can possess heaven and earth. What is it he was looking for in heaven? And what was it that he was looking for on earth? If he can get what is in heaven and get what is on earth, he is El Elyon. Oh God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then he's fighting. So the battles of the devil can only be summed up heaven and earth slowly where did rebellion begin Bege rebellion began in and then the rebellion came back to the earth so we are having two spheres already defiled we have heaven defiled we have the other defiled and god must look for a way to cap and destroy the rebellion in heaven and rebellion on earth so what he's going to do, he's going to set up two principles on how to cleanse the heaven and how to reclaim the earth. And that's why we are calling the mystery of God is a program on earth. The mystery of Christ is a program in heaven. Amen. Amen. The gospel of the kingdom is a program to bring back the earth to the owner. And the gospel of the grace of God is to bring back the heaven to the owner. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So right there in heaven, there must appear someone. And when that person goes up, the devil has no business and he will never return to heaven. Amen. And that's why we are preaching today. Bring the people and tell them, you are an ambassador of heaven to the earth, but you are a citizen of heaven. Amen. That's why we are telling you in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 19, 20, and 21. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, and he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We are out reconciling the people, telling them this is not your place. Your time on the earth is ending. You need to join us. We go out of this place. Amen. And in us is locked a program of the purpose why God created the heaven. And in Israel, as I said this morning, and in Israel is a program. Amen. Amen? Amen. To reclaim the earth. Amen. And then through that, we have got programs. We may call it the mystery of God and the mystery of Christ. The gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of, in the future, one of the preachers preached to me. The gospel of circumcision and the gospel of uncircumcision. Amen? These are the programs of God. They don't involve Mars and earth. They involve the earth and the heaven. Oh, praise the Lord. Give him a hand clap. Eh? So the devil must lose all the battles. 
He must lose the battle in heaven. But there must be an agent that God is going to use to get the devil out. I'm backgrounded. In heaven, amen? Yeah. And there must be an agent means by the way the devil is going to be removed off the earth. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Now these people are coming. Let me give an example. When the children of Israel came out of Egypt, they had already been given that land by God, right? And when they were given the land by God, when they came, they realized there were seven tribes that have strategically captured places in Canaan that meant so much to God and his dealings with Israel. Oh God. When God gave Abraham the land, there was Mount Moriah in that land. Say amen, that's true. Amen. There was Machpelah in that land. Amen. There was Hebron in that land. Amen. There was Bethel in that land. These were places of supernatural manifestation. Amen. And God had given Abraham the land. He told Abraham in this land, there is a place that it will take the spiritual people to discover. Amen. God comes to Abraham in Genesis chapter 20, 22. He tells Abraham, go and take your son and sacrifice your only son to one of the mountains of Moriah. And Abraham travels three days. When he gets to Mount Moriah, hallelujah, Amen. he realizes Mount Moriah, there is a man that lives there and his name is Jehovah Jireh. Amen. Abraham is going there and the son is already under judgment. Hallelujah. When he reaches there, the son is stumbles over another lamb that has taken his place. Amen. When this man has tied his son, he wants to kill him. Then there is a voice. Abraham, Abraham. I love that man when he calls you twice as much. Amen. He called Abraham, Abraham. Amen. Moses, Moses. Amen. Samuel, Samuel. Amen. Peter, Peter. Amen. Saul, Saul. Simon, Simon. Reuben, Reuben. When he calls you, there is something he wants to do. When he calls you twice as much, there is something he wants to do. He is calling your attention. And when Abraham turned, the Bible says, he saw a ram tied. Let me get evangelistic for two, service, for two minutes. Your ram is already tied. Amen. Your blessing is already tied to the thicket. Amen. You have to get it because God came. He didn't just come. He came and tied it and said this belongs to Isaac. Amen. The lamb could not run away. Amen. And I want to tell you, your ram is already tied. Amen. It is already locked somewhere. It can't move anywhere. It is you to turn your eyes. Amen. If I preach like this, I won't finish. Ken, this is the kind of your preachings, right? Because that voice says you can preach like that. And but what are you going to do? Because maybe you need to stand on top of the pulpit, but this place is short. Praise the Lord. The ram is already tied in a thicket. So say, do not. Then Abraham looks and he finds his provision. God is telling him, I'm introducing you to a finished work. Thank you, Jesus. I'm coming to show you it's already done. When I was telling you, take a journey to Mount Moriah, I was trying to tell you it's already finished. I want you to start walking to go and meet it. It is already a finished thing. And when this man goes and he finds the ram, then the ministry of this man changes. It is now from condemnation to grace. Amen. Isaac, you are supposed to die, but I have another ministry. Amen. I want to untie your feet and then to... Why are you untying the feet of Isaac? Amen. God has provided a lamb. Amen. God has provided a lamb that was never, never born, but created. Amen. And then this man Isaac is going home. Isaac, why are you going home? The lamb took my place. Yeah. What would you do if such a place was captured? Hallelujah. Amen. If you're the children of Israel and you are coming out of Egypt and you find your place, that place is captured, you know in your congregation there will never be a manifestation of Jehovah Jireh because the place must be. Tell me what in English. The place must be liberated. Amen. If I want to see that Jehovah 
Jehovah Nani? Jehovah Jireh. That place the people have captured, that place. I don't care if you are on the Jeb side. You must give up the place because I want the manifestation of a Jehovah Jireh in my life. I want that in my church. I want that in my society. That place must be liberated. These people captured important places. Amen. And you couldn't pray enough. You needed that person who has captured that place to get loose. Get out of that place. Because the honor to whom it was given. I have to ask for 15 more minutes. I'm saying when I've finished, I will ask for 15 more minutes. Because this is occupying space. It is matter. Listen. So this place, while the children of Israel are coming back, they realize there is a person who has captured that place and is called Onan the Jebusite. You people, you realize Jerusalem was never called Jerusalem before. It was called Jab. It was called Jebus. And Jebus was a tribe. But I want you to look at the experiences locked in that place. These people needed to go. And God was like, the children of Israel, you have to discover these places in yourself. Just, just use that alone. Just use that part alone. When they are coming, they realize we need Jehovah Jireh. But that place is strategically captured. When I go to the heaven, you will see the heaven that has been captured with the principalities and power. And you have to dispose them off. So that you can have the heavenly experiences in your life. You are the person God is going to use to get these occupants in the heavenly places. Get them out. Amen. You are the person God is going to use. Because God used Israel to remove the people for the blessing to come down. You must come again and remove a certain part of our, our power and our principality on your inheritance in heaven. If Sister Godfrey is here. We were talking about that. Then David is making a mistake. He's counting the people. Do you know the two accounts given in the Bible, the book of Samuel and the book of should be Chronicles are different. One says, and God was angry with Israel and he caused David to number the people. Another account says, and the devil stood against Israel and caused David to number. So the question is, when you are standing to blame David, you need to know there was a battle in the spiritual world. Yes. God, the devil wanted these people to move out so that he can punish them. Amen? Amen. Look at what is happening here. So when he numbers the people, Job tells him, no, why are you numbering these people? Even if there are few, they belong to you. He goes ahead and numbers and that becomes a reason why God is going to punish him. But David had prayed in Psalms and says, lead me to a rock higher than I am. Amen. Into this kind of confusion, God is going to lead him to a place that had been captured. Amen. That was Mount Moriah, 2 Chronicles chapter 3. The Bible says, and Solomon built a temple on the place where the angel appeared to his father on Mount Moriah. And Mount Moriah, you follow the threat, it is found in James chapter 20, 22. Is it 22? <coughs> 22? Which means David is making a mistake where Jehovah Jireh is standing. And he doesn't know. I'm standing at the place where Abraham stood. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Then while he's wondering what to do, God the prophet receives a transmission from the angel. Tell David to go and offer a burnt offering on the floor of Onan. David is running He's now discovering there is something about this place. He goes there and he offers an offering. Then the angel takes the sword and he sheathes the sword. David has discovered a supernatural Amen. strategic place that had been captured. Amen. Then he wants to have it. Onan says you can have it for free. David says I want to buy it back. I want to buy it back although it belonged to me. Amen. I want to buy it back so there are no future claims on this place. Amen. He captures the place. Amen. After capturing the place, what happened to the place? Then he says, now this is the house of God. It is an altar of God. 
When Solomon comes in the same place, he offers the longest prayer. If your children are in problem, they come here, here from heaven. If they're running from the enemy, if they're diseases, if they have any problem, remember, then Solomon is, cover, he is covering Daniel. He's covering Jonah. He's covering Ezekiah. He's covering George Fad. Right in that place, a place has been captured. Amen. Amen. What about heaven? What about heaven? If on earth there were strategic places that God would meet his people, and then he said, I will never meet you anywhere else but in Jerusalem. You know how that has been confused by so-called the message believers mixing the promises. So Jerusalem becomes for the children of Israel. It didn't matter the problem. I love one of the prayers of Solomon. He says, whatsoever problem, whatsoever prayer that is prayed in this place, hear from heaven. Amen. I can hear an old Branham. I say that is called the third pool. Some of those things they don't exist. We shall hit them out. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible says in, just write it down if you are writing, Revelation 11 verse 8. And there was war in heaven. Now, let me, let me take you up to heaven again. You know you've not begun our message? Yeah, because what has that to do with the family of heaven and the earth? It's a background, amen? Then I don't have to use so many words to tell you I have so much that God has opened to us. Through his own word, not through some false prophet. Did you say false prophet? Yes. Yes. Revelation 12, 8. Verse 7. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angel fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angel, and prevailed not. Neither was there their place found any more in heaven. Did someone pick that? Did you pick that? They had a place in heaven. Oh, Esther, you are right there? Your grandson, Sister Miriam. Oh. In heaven, there were also strategic places. I don't have time, but I would read to you Ephesians 3.10 3, that says, principalities and the power should be known to the church. Principalities and the power in heavenly places should be known to the church. Because heaven has got principalities and powers. Just like there are principalities and the powers on earth. Did you capture that? So when Michael stands in heaven, like Joshua stood on earth, people are not getting what I'm saying. Just like Joshua led them to dispose of the nations that had claimed the strategic place, Michael also led the battle in heaven. And I love where it says, and their place was not found. Amen. What? What are you doing, Pole Pole? If there was a dominion that belongs to you, and the devil had falsely captured like a Malachite down here on earth, like a Jebusite, like a Hivite, or a Canaanite. When that person gets out of that power, that place of domain, what happens? The power that was locked in that place starts coming back to the right person. Because when this place was captured by David, Mount Moriah, then all the experiences were failed. Amen. Who felt the experiences of Mount Moriah? I know your mind is locked. Did Jonah pray? Yes, thank you, Jesus. In the belly of the well, Amen. facing the same place. Amen. Did he benefit when that Amen. power was taken away? Amen. Did Ezekiah, when he was praying, facing the wall, did he face the wall of Jerusalem? Amen. Did God extend him 15 years? Amen. Did Jehoshaphat, that had been attacked by three nations, when he went to the same place to pray, did God bless him? Did Daniel pray facing the same place? Did a visitation of the angel come back to him? What about the heavenly people when they pray? Maybe God gives you patience. Maybe he gives you joy. Maybe he, give, he gives you a way to testify so that a demon power that is holding your blessing in heaven is removed. Amen. Then you start feeling the blessing. Amen. Amen. 
some things must be spoken by evangelist. Ken, you know I'm gossiping, right? You know I'm front biting, you know back because you are in front of me. Can you imagine that the children of Israel waiting for their forgiveness? They are running away from battle like, jo like, like who? Like Joshua. And the blessing is locked in Moriah. He's calling for visitation like Daniel. And the blessing is locked in Moriah. He's running away from an enemy. And the blessing is locked in Moriah. And he's running again. He's in problems like Jonah. And the blessing is locked in Mount Moriah. Mount Moriah must be recaptured. Amen. When he's recaptured, then Jonah, wherever you are, you are free. Amen. George, but you are free. Amen. Hezekiah, you are free. Amen. Isaac, you are free. Amen. George, but you are free. Amen. You have come to a strategic place. Amen. Do you have such a place in heaven? Amen. You people, you are holding me there. Why are you holding me there? I want to move. You are holding me in the same place. Then there are places in heaven, spheres. You people read Colossians 1. If there are principalities and power, if there are thrones, plural, if there are powers visible and invisible, all these Christ must have preeminence. Yeah. Visible power is on earth. Invisible is in heaven. Visible dominion on earth, invisible is in heaven. Principality on earth, visible. Principality in heaven, Invisible. That is the church and Israel captured. Amen. 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 Oh, or you say, okay, what are you talking about? Then God gives you things in your life to dispose of as quarter on a certain place in heaven. Yes. Amen. Just like He gave them power, Amen. they fought in AI. Amen. They fought the, the, the kings. Amen. What were the three kings? The, the, the two kings. Heshbon, and then he became the inheritance of Reuben, half tribe of Manasseh and God. The Bible says when they end there, because the place they looked at the place, they realized the place was so good for cattle. Amen? Amen. Like with our Messiahs of Kenya. They just moved from place looking for pasture. So these guys realized, aha, Reuben told Moses. God and half man, no, 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 we are not going to go beyond Jordan. We found our needs are going to be met and supplied here. Amen. Do you have such a place? Oh, I'm talking about a heaven, not a big field. Oh, amen, someone. Amen. As these tribes are leaving the land, also a demon power is going. Amen. So God wanted to use you to restore heaven. Amen. God wanted to use you to pass heaven from all to the new. Amen. And if you don't come, there will never be new heaven. Amen. You are the reason for the new heaven. In you, Christ will bring the new heaven. Because there is, you are the heavenly people. Amen. 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 See, so you come on Meshika. Do you want me to call names? Meshika. If this have gone, the other people have gone. The place where they were ruling. The king of who? What was the king of that? There were the two kings that were killed. King Sihon and Og. And that inheritance became the inheritance of Reuben. And God and half tribe of Manasseh. So it was a throne they took over. You guys are not getting it. This tribe took the throne because the kings were destroyed. The power was destroyed. They came back. Are you telling me that dominion? The Bible says we are, we are not fighting flesh and blood. Yes. We are fighting principalities and powers Amen. in heavenly places. Amen. And when we get them out, Amen. thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God must give you something in your life. Amen. To be able to remove that power in heaven. Amen. He must, sometimes he gives you patience. Amen. Amen. Sometimes he tells you testify. Yes. Sometimes he tells you study. Yes. Sometimes he tells you fast. Sometimes he tells you show temperance. You are removing principalities and powers. Amen. Because we are fighting not against flesh and blood. We are fighting principalities and power in high places. Amen. 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 Amen
Mumeshika. Amen. Does the Bible say you are citizenship in heaven? Amen. Do you think we are going to go to heaven and the, the people who are holding the power still remain? They have to go. Amen. Amen. Don't make alliance with them. Don't make alliance with the demon power. Amen. Don't compromise on the word of God. It will be very hard to remove that demon power. Don't compromise on the word of God. Amen. It doesn't matter. Don't look at the pastor standing there. He could be under wrong influence. Amen. Don't just stand and say, my pastor say, find out what he said if it is dovetailing with the scriptures. He could be a power taking off your blessing. He could be a principality in high places. Whoever it is, I want to say the heavenly people are coming. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling. You know people have sung songs, even some songs are very unscriptural. They are saying, because they want us to go to Canaan. We are not going to Canaan. We are going to heaven. Amen. Amen. A lot of songs have changed the Bible. Amen. Amen. But I'm telling you, when the people of the heaven come, these are the people that restrains the devil. Amen. They tell the devil, too far, no further. Yeah. And they're not just going to stop the devil, they're going to cast him out. Amen. Because we are there in inhabitants of this land. Yeah. You know that land has got corn. The Bible say when they ate the manna, they actually ate our food. <laughs> when they got into the land, they planted their own corn, and the heavenly corn stopped. I'm reading the Bible. The Bible says very clearly, God fed them with the manna, the angels' food. People ate the corn of heaven. Until when they got eh, three people among you saying, hey, hey, hey. Until when they end, entered the land and ate the corn of the land, then the heavenly corn stopped. Wow. I finished one hour already before I got to my message. 53 minutes. But are you getting blessed? Amen, amen. Is there a land like this land? Do you want to tell me this earth came from another world? Does the Bible say the things that are were created from the things that do not appear? Amen. Did Paul in Romans chapter 7 deal with the 17 powers and he dealt with the visible and the invisible? Is the devil confined? His battle is about getting the heaven and getting the earth? Yeah? So God chose a people. He said, okay, for the heaven to be new, <laughs> I'm going to set aside a people called the body of Christ. Amen. And then for the earth to be new, I'm going to call a people called the children of Israel. Yes. And when I've achieved the purpose of the heaven and the purpose of the earth, I'm going to bring out something called the mystery of his will. Yes. Now that's a service next Sunday. Amen. The mystery of his will. When the mystery of Christ is finished and the mystery of God is finished, there is another mystery called the mystery of his will. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You want to tell me, I don't know, I'm going to speak next Sunday. I'm going to speak on that. And even the Sunday that follows, I know. If God still keeps him in the same channel. Sometimes a brother calls you on Saturday evening and that channel is blocked again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You love the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So God had good purpose for this place. Look at this man. Let me just background because I'm now, when I finish this hour, I go to the next place now. You remember the man by the name Adonijah? In the book of, is it 2 Kings? 
Adonija wants to steal the kingdom. The kingdom had already been assigned to the son of David called Solomon. And the father, David had spoken to the woman Bathsheba that now this your son will inherit the throne. And God had already spoken in 2 Samuel 7 verse 16 going down that God will give David a son whose kingdom there will never be an end. Prefigured and typed Jesus, but in the life of Solomon, which was a type of the millennium, right? Yeah. But now before the millennium, there was another man who was trying to take the kingdom. You guys, do you know I'm in the book of Revelation already? Do you know I'm dealing with the ten tribes, the, the, the ten horns already? Wanting to take over and to usurp the throne? So Adonijah takes who? Adonijah takes Job. Huh? And takes another breath call. Habiada. Gathers the people to enthrone himself as a king. Then the prophet called Nathan comes to Bathsheba very fast. And she says, the kingdom is going to be taken. Run very fast to the king. And let the king declare the king that is taking over. Then when you go to the king, I will also come. And confirm your words. So she goes by peers before the king, and the king is sleeping, and on top of the king is a Gentile woman called Abishak. But I want to tell you, Adonijah is going to go for two things. He's going to go for the kingdom, and he's going to go for the woman. That one tells you the devil's ambitions. That tells you about the heaven and the earth. Did you get that? Amen. Then when this one is declared, David speaks very fast and say, take the mule that the king rides on. Put my son on it in Revelation 19. Let him ride down. Amen? Amen. And then the people cry and say, so God save the king. So when this man, Adonijah hears that, he runs and stands on the altar. And he says, save me. And then the king doesn't kill him. Chapter 2. The same Adonijah wants now the woman. He goes and tells Bathsheba, I want you to give this woman to me. You know even the king. Have you read it? The Bible says, he told Bathsheba, you know even the kingdom was mine. Is that the claim of the devil? You know the kingdom was mine. But let my brother just rule. But just help me. At least you divide the heaven and the earth so that I can at least get the heaven. I have lost the earth. People don't know what I'm talking about. He has lost one and he wants the next one. <laughs> so Solomon now says, <laughs> it was a small thing. Today you will die. And that's how Adonijah lost both places. Amen. He lost the kingdom. Amen. And lost the woman. Amen. That's how the devil is going to lose. Amen. Loses the earth and loses the heaven. Amen. The battle is between El Elyon. Amen. 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 Are we together so far? Amen. Now let's begin our service. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you're talking about the heaven and the earth, we are talking according to what Paul has told us. There is a family in heaven and a family on earth. Mm -hmm. This would be really different from what Israel knew and what God had called Israel. God had told Israel, you are the only family. That is in Amos chapter 3 verse 2. You are the only family I knew. And that is exactly the truth. There was no any other family on earth except Israel. So there was no, in other words, there was no any other gospel on earth except the gospel of the kingdom. But when Paul, God visits Paul, he comes and unveils the purpose of the heaven. Aki, God, God be blessed. We wouldn't have known the purpose of the heaven. And even the language of Paul is different. The language of Paul, I've written a few things here.
Ephesians 3.10, he talks about God gathering all things from heaven and in the earth in Christ Jesus. So there are things in heaven, there are things on earth. Colossians 1.16, he said that dominions and principalities thrown visible and invisible. And Christ must have preeminence in all of them. Ephesians 1, 2, the church is seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Perhaps that one is also in Ephesians 2, 6 to 1. We are, he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Ephesians 3, 9 to 10 says, principalities in heaven may be known to the church. Did you understand that? Principalities in heaven may be known who? So there are principalities where? They are supposed to be known to who? To the church. And Paul is saying that in Ephesians chapter 3. Where Ephesians chapter 3 is where he talks about a mystery that was never known to God. Now, if there has to be, let's go faster. Praise the Lord. I want you I want you now to go to the Old Testament. Are you ready now, friends? Amen. You know very well in Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 say all authority in heaven and on earth is given to me. Are you having another scripture there? All authority in heaven and on earth is given to me. So where heaven and earth is mentioned, see two people with different destinies. Now, if we are talking about the family that God already said I knew. So heaven has a different administration and earth has a different administration. The heaven, administration of the heaven is called the mystery of Christ. The administration on earth is called the mystery of God. That was declared to his servant, the prophets. Amen? Amen? Already made known to his servant, the prophets. Finished in Revelation 11 all the way. Amen. So when someone comes and say, tells you he has got the mystery of the heaven and the earth. Tell him you have no blessing for me. Because that's an administration of a different group of people. Amen. Amen. And when he tells you he has come to reveal, tell him you are a liar. Revelation 10, 7 says, the mystery that was already declared is now going to be finished. So you have nothing else to reveal. Amen. Amen. But the mystery of Christ was hid in God. Amen. So there is preaching the gospel according to the prophecy and preaching the gospel according to the revelation of the mystery. Amen. together. So when God is talking about the children of Israel, listen to me now, friends. He is telling them, if there was a family, we must talk about a wife. Now, be very, very careful on the things I want to speak to you today. In this hour that we began. At the end when it is finished, the best line and the bottom line is one. God's union with man. Be it Israel or the gender, it's going to be a union. And we have got words of union that is called marriage. And I want us to read together in the book of Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 31. Jeremiah 31, 31. God assigns a female attribute or entity or identity to Israel. Female identity is assigned by God to Israel. Gentiles. It's because they don't know the division in the scriptures. So when God comes in Mark 4 and says, remember the law of Moses on Mount Horeb. People want us to remember when we were not there when these things was happening. I want to tell you the things we are reading about that God is going to erase. God is going to establish a new covenant because the first covenant was violated. Listen to me. 
Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Number one, the thing that you need to ask yourself, what type of covenant is God talking about? Is he talking about just an agreement? Or it is a family relationship word used as a covenant? Are we together so far? Amen. We have got a covenant of soul. We have a covenant that God made with the Phineas after killing Cosby and Zimri. He said, I will give you four generations. Oh, no, no, I will give you a priesthood. There was a covenant there. There was a covenant that God made with Jehu. Because you've killed Jezebel, I'll give you a generation, I'll give kingship to your four generations. When God talks about a covenant here, what does he have in mind? Can we read further to find out what he has in mind? It says, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of Egypt. Which my covenant they broke, although I was an husband unto them. So this covenant that God made with them was a husband and a wife kind of a covenant. Amen. I repeat, did you find the word used there? Not that the covenant I made with them when I brought them out of where? Out of Egypt. What kind of covenant was this? Was it a marriage covenant? Oh my God, this is my class. Something that, someone don't worry, someone is getting it. Either here or there. Godfrey, where are you? Can you come and sit right here? I want you to read some scripture for me. Is Godfrey right here? I want you to sit here. God is going to make a new covenant. You know, God had occupied dominion and the principal of Brother Gilbert. Because Gilbert is not in today. So in this place, he's not found. It says verse 32. Can you read for me verse 32? Just take some water here. Verse 32, what does it say? Not according to the I want you loud. That's the reason I called for you. I would have taken him. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband and them. God is saying, this is a woman that has broken a marriage covenant. So God is saying, right there, I'm going to make a new covenant. Right there, we find restoration. Of a woman coming back under another covenant. Oh God. What does the word covenant mean? Strong tells me. Strong tell me what covenant is. The word covenant. Are you together with me? The word covenant. Is. In Strong's is 1285. It means to pass by or is made by passing between pieces of flesh. So there can never be a covenant unless blood has been shed. Because by blood you ratify a covenant. So there could never be a covenant. Let me say this if you can listen to me. A covenant does not necessarily mean a testament. Although it means the same way, but a testament, you can have a testament where there is no shedding of blood. That's the one that Paul uses in the book of Hebrews. He say, a testament is without force until the death of a testator. That one is like more of an agreement. But when you talk about a covenant, you are talking about the blood being shed. So God entered in the covenant with these people and the blood of the animal was shed to ratify the covenant. Because covenant comes from the word bereath, B-E-R-I-Y-T. It means to pass between split sacrifice of an animal. The way God did with Abraham in Genesis chapter 18, Genesis chapter 15. Abraham slept, right? And after Abraham slept, God, the right was seen, 
passing through the split animal that was made of a heifer, a she god, and a ram. Amen. Then Abraham, the covenant was supposed to be, they were supposed to stand in the middle, like in between here. God stands and Abraham stands there. And then they say this to one to another. If you don't fulfill the, your son, you are the part of the pact, you will be like this animal. And the other one speaks the same thing. But for Abraham, Abraham was not standing there. It is God alone who stood there, saying, I'll fulfill your part and my part as well. That is called grace. Amen. Where God comes down in the body of Jesus to fulfill your part. Amen. Amen? Amen. And fulfills his own part. So what do you become? You only become a beneficiary of the, of the work. Right? Amen. So we now realize the Bible is saying that the covenant was a marriage like kind of a covenant. Because God says, although I became God, a husband unto you. Where was the wedding done? The wedding was done at the foot of Mount Sinai. It is where God stood. Because the Branhamites were told Israel is a servant. And the bride is the Gentile. You will be shocked. Paul never used the word bride in his letters. You are looking at me nicely. <laughs> what would happen to a woman that was one time married and something happened and she was separated from her husband and she's returning as a servant? Is that reconciliation? Is that res restoration? Thank you. You see how we've been misled? Even us, Simon Shivaka preaching the same thing. That Israel is a servant because we don't understand. We don't study relationship of God with Israel. He's just a husband and a wife. You want me to give you scriptures? He says, although I was a husband to them. Exodus chapter 19. They spoke the way a woman speaks in a wedding. 19 verse 5. Stay with me. I saw the sister ask me the other time. So what about the charges? Then she disappeared. She should have been here when we talk about the charges for, for her to know. Are there charge ages? Or in some theology of some man? You know, sometimes people ask questions and they run away. Ask a question and stay here. Let it be taught. She asked me and we are only two. Say, this is not, this is not a small lamb. This is a big one for all the people to listen to. So I did not explain to her. Oh, you think you forgot? I don't forget things. God gave me a little bit of some memory. Even for good and for bad, I remember. Exodus 19. Verse 5, now therefore if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant where he was there, a husband, then you shall be a peculiar people unto me above all the people for all the earth is mine. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. All that goes all the way. Amen. What did the children of Israel respond? Exodus 24 verse 3. 24 verse 3, what does it say? And Moses came down and told the people the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice. All the words which the Lord has said we will do. Will you take this man to be a holy, your lawful wedded husband? To live together in this state of matrimony. And you shall forsake all other gods. <laughs> and the woman said, yes, I do. Hallelujah. Amen. And Israel said, yes, we will do. We've heard people preaching and saying they should have said we can't do. That they say Israel missed. In Exodus 19, when they said they shall do, and that's the time they dropped Abraham's covenant. We preached it, but we were wrong. 
This was our marriage covenant. If he said, said I will not do, it would mean I have understanding here with a, a woman with a wide hair, with a long white cloth. And then the marriage contract is being read. Will you love this man? And then he said, no, no, and then she runs away. Now we are full of those kind of weddings. But Israel said, yes, I will do. That is marriage connotations. Is that what in, is that English? That word there has undertones of marriage. Huh? His calls for vocabulary have refused to take that word. It is a word saying this was a marriage relationship. And then he tells them, I'm married to you. I'll give you scriptures. God married Israel. Earthly to produce an earthly family. He needed a marriage. Amen. And for a marriage, he needed a covenant. And for a covenant, he needed blood. And the blood of God was the blood of bulls to ratify the covenant. So he entered into a marriage relationship with Israel. When you talk about hallelujah, restoration of Israel, you must remember, is she a wife? I'm preaching to you things that were preached wrongly. You talk of Israel being restored and you have whom can I use? My wife here. The mother of Shalom. All the way up to Shama. It's like it's a long distance. Then we separate. After separating, she comes back. And one of the sons sees the mother separate with the father and cries like who? Cries like who? No. Cries like Paul. In Romans 9. It was a son seeing the father separated from the mother. And he said, my heart is heavy. Did he say that? I want you to picture a son. The father has left the mother, or the mother has left the father, or oh, there is a separation. And the son is looking. And the father is saying, you have forgotten your first love. You have forgotten the days of your youth. Do you have such a scripture? When I took you from Egypt, and I ended in a covenant with you, and you were mine. In Ezekiel 16, 8. I want to show you two sons. And I want to show you another son that stands there to see a mother getting remarried, restored. And she says, let us be glad, hallelujah, for the marriage of the Lamb has come now. We want to see our son standing there, witnessing the mother coming back. Amen. Amen. How many of you can relate to what I'm talking about? I have family here. I'm talking like that because I'm a product of a separated family. My father and my mother separated when I was four years. So I know what I'm talking about. I know when a son is longing for these people to unite. I know when a son has to sit down to sit to hear, I'm not talking about African setup. A son has to sit down to hear the father talking ill of the mother. Or the mother talking ill of the father. And the son is saying, now what do I do? You are all my parents. Did you hear me? Amen. Did you hear me? Amen. I'm not going to quote that sound read. I want you to read Romans 9. Paul, after he has revealed the mystery of the heavenly family, he comes down to the earth. God read for us as we go to Ezekiel 16 verse 8. Read for us Romans 9 verse 1 to 5 fast enough. So that the people who are replacing Israel with the Gentiles, they will be asked, what are you going to do with the suffering of Paul? Romans 9, 1. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me with me, yes. the Holy Ghost. Yes. But I have great heaviness. I have great heaviness. And continual sorrow in my heart. Yes. For, for I could wish that myself were cast from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Did the Paul talk like that about the Gentiles? But he has finished with the Gentiles, and his heart is going for his mama. Amen? Amen. He's looking at the father separate from the mother when they're permanently around you, they are permanently. 
In Acts chapter 7, Israel squandered all the time that was remaining from crucifixion to Acts chapter 7 was one year. They had asked for one year where they stoned Stephen. Chapter 8, Samaritans were saved. The Holy Spirit was moving away. Chapter 9, Paul was saved. Chapter 10, Cornelius received the Holy Ghost. Chapter 11, Peter is giving an account how he went to the Gentiles. Chapter 12, a separation. Chapter 13, the moment for the Gentiles begins. And then Paul writes his first letter in the book of Thessalonians. But it's arranged as the book of Romans. And he says, my father and my mother are no longer together. What does he say? Who are Israelites? Whom pertain the adoption? How can you mix the two together when Paul is separating the two? And the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God. No, you are not reading properly. I want you to read like you are. Like one. To whom pertain the adoption? Adoption, that's one. The glory. Two. The covenants. Three. The giving of the law. Four. And the service of God. Five. And the promises. And the promises. Six. Whose are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. When Paul said that, it was like a prayer. He finished with the amen. He is talking about the seven privileges of a woman. She had lost it. And Paul is looking at the mother and looking at the father. But as it's written in Romans 11, 26, read it very fast for us. 11, 26. Yes, fast. Can God delay the time for me? It's 31 minutes past already. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Paul has got a hope. Yes. He is looking ahead. He is saying, my father and my mother are separated. And Paul has been anointing a scripture. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. He is talking about the new covenant again, right? Amen. Mm -hmm. As concerning the gospel, these are enemies. Yes. Amen. But as touching the election, they are beloved. They are beloved. For the Father's sake. They look like enemies, but as touching election, they are the Father's beloved. Amen. But there was a separation for another relationship to begin, which is heavenly. Amen. Do you understand? Amen. Give me a little story one time. When I was going to pick my mother, she's going to see my father after 40 years. There had never been a communication in between. So we are going to, to do something. I told my father, you have to put on a suit. And then he told me, Simon, no, 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 we are going to buy some animals for, for the dowry. I told him, my father, I have a hidden clothes. I have something, that's the reason I want you to look presentable. I was going to take my, my father to meet my mother after 40 years. The father didn't know. So it was like, no, no, I told him there is a reason. After we've brought the animals, I want us to go to Kakamega. I've already booked a room. My mother is traveling all the way from Nairobi. You are going to meet for the first time. That can be emotional, right? When I met them, I was trying to tell my father, can you hug her? My mom said, no, 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 no. I said, it's just because I'm here. And then the father was coming with his hands. Mama refused. I first of all took her to the room, where I had, uh, the hotel room, and I had my mother pray for the first time. You know what she said? She said, God, I didn't know one day I'd meet the father of Simon. We are four. We are not four. We are, how many are we? We are six. Four boys and two girls. But she didn't use any of the names. She said, God, I didn't know I'm going to meet. I will one day meet the father of Simon. I had closed my eyes. These are two people meeting after 40 years. I took them for supper. That is a son. We want to see another son saying, and I cry a lot. I want to see another son taken in the spirit. Amen. I might show you the bride, the last wife. 
And he said, let us be glad. My mother is coming back to the covenant. The previous covenant could not sustain Israel. And God had to establish another place for the covenant. To bring them new. That's why Elijah and Moses are coming back. Amen. They renew their marriage again. Come, you know what your hands if come on me. Give him a hand clap, amen. amen. All the people listening to me, I don't want to mention your names or listening to me, what I'm talking about. You know the pain a son has to go through when the mother separates from the father. Don't you know that? Amen. So one day my mother called me right and told her, Simon, did your father tell you I send him 500 shillings? And no, he didn't tell me. They're now friends. So I took my phone, called my father. And I told him, how can I be the friend of the bridegroom? I told my father, how can I try to help this girl come back to you? And she's giving you money, you can't even give me five cents. And we laughed it off. When I went with the Shalom two weeks ago to Nairobi, when we opened the car, my mother was standing outside and she was saying, Simon, are these the only visitors? She was expecting my mom, my father, but she didn't tell me. You know how that one end, entered in my heart? Because I'm a son, she fears to say some words. Then I called Baba, I told him, look here, you are supposed to be here. And he said, Simon, you remember before COVID, your mother actually said you take me to see her. And then my mother was like, tell your father. I want him to come here and see what I have. I want him to see the great thing he threw away. And then she comes and says, no, it was not throwing away. It was the plan of God. I know she's now soothing me. <laughs> oh, God. There are things, Sister Miriam, a song that says, I would cry but I'm a man today. It is emotional. When a father separates, but I want to say for you, children of a separated family, I'm giving you a scripture. Romans 11, 26. As it is written, out of Zion shall come a deliverer that shall take away and clean us from Jacob. Amen. You people who your father and your mother right there, you don't know what it means. Israel was like that. But when they are fully restored, Amen. And the Bible says in the book of Joel, is it Joel or one or somewhere? You shall cry and sing like the days of your youth. You shall remember the good days when you got married as a girl. It is the renewal of a marriage. I want to tell you the love of reconciliation is stronger than the love before you messed up with whoever. Amen. The love of reconciliation is much stronger. And that's what God will feel and Israel will feel. I'm talking about earthly relationship. And at the bottom line is union with God. That's what I'm calling marriage. Amen. God uniting with Israel, God uniting with the Gentiles. A brother told me, the brothers who went to polygamy. I told him, don't call the brothers who went to polygamy. These are my brothers. It was a result of this false teaching that gave people to look at things like that. It is a man who stands around and says, brother, send me a quote yesterday from Rwanda. A man who stands around because when I was in the United States, I asked someone, what made William Bram have such a disgust for women? Why? He doesn't seem to bless women in the right place. A brother told me, uh, there's a time he saw a, a woman committing adultery against her husband. But why did he have to plunk it and call women scrapes? And even called them, he said, every siren you hear, every girl you see was caused by a woman. When the Bible says by one man, sin entered, it doesn't call a woman. That's what the Bible says. People didn't summon him. A woman is never condemned in the Bible. The Bible says, by one man sin entered. But Branham says a woman needs a clean bullet in the head. He says he saw some girls 
that were drinking, and the men were giving them coffee to sober them up so that they can go and cook for their husbands. And then he said, and that day I used to think she needs a clean bullet in her head. And then down there he says, I'm careful, I'm watching that, because that is, had an influence upon him. And sisters, that's what has bound you. And that's why you find it better to express yourself before God because of a teaching that never blessed the value on a whom a woman attribute of God. Right? Amen. A sister singing that song, if it was a message, church, should be called out by deacons. And I'm making the work easy for you, Branhamites. You used to call me an unbeliever. Today, please call me. Before you say, now I'll tell you, non believer of Branham. Amen. Don't waste time. I'm making it easier for you. Amen. But I believe of the Bible. Amen. You stay among the people who are not calling you a believer. I'm telling you, a man would treat a woman like that. Read a book written called the Serpent Sail. And you see what the Leo Massey and Jean got dead. And these are the tape boys of William Branham. You will be shocked. You are upset. Yes, sir. Then he comes around and says, you youth listen to me, and you cast me a question later. He comes around and says, hey, in the message, be certain of God 1959. You know the problem? I know everything you said. So, ah, 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 he said this. Ah, he said this. 1947, he said this. He said this. He even said, I even don't need to pray for him in Jesus' name. I can just talk to you and you get healed. Okay. He said, a, a believer has no right under any circumstance to marry an unbeliever. And we all said, but now when we dig down to find out who is a believer, then you realize a believer is a believer of William Branham. Now because I'm not a Branhamite, that nonsense doesn't bind me. Young man, did you hear? Amen. Amen. We are sitting somewhere, and one of the sons of our sister said, Pastor, is it right for a brother to marry a wife? And the mother never had it right. She said, Ati? <laughs> I wondered why, why that word really... I thought, if you've got a brother, a sister that is a wife, and you want to marry, and you love them, bring them here, I join you. Amen. Amen. I say, bring them, I join you. Amen. I have no scripture unless he's a racist. Who would come and stand? You know, uh, God is like a flower. So there is yellow, there is red, there is blue. You are using that, but behind you, you know, you are a racist. Give me a scripture. Yes. So when you talk about the believers, you are talking about the people who follow the message. We want to see that I'm telling you, I am man. Religion doesn't join hearts. It is love that joins hearts. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So what do you do? Then a sister or a brother gets married. After he's gone married, he's been agreed he married an unbeliever. And the person, the brother or the sister married, is a Christian that is going to heaven. But because he's not in Branhamite, he's an unbeliever. So they say they grill the person, put the person down there, and then he's now marked. And that time a preacher is preaching on a pizza apple. And as some of you married an unbelievers. And then you are making this family to live under condemnation. Because you are not a kinsman that can liberate the people. You gave them a wrong model to follow. You told them the believers of the message are the only message believers. On Tuesday, a sister called me, if she's listening in today. She told me, you have time, I want to talk to you. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm very busy. She said, you just, just come. So I was in town. She sat me down and told me, I want to tell you this. I'm so grateful for the stand you've taken. We have been waiting for people to take such a stand. And then she asked me, I want to ask a question. Simon? I told her, talk to me, remove all the gloves, remove the badge. Talk to me as Simon. We got 1789 together. We grew together as a young man and a woman. Tell me. She told me, you know what? Where did you get the boldness to put the pictures on your walls? And then she said, my mother is so and so, my grandmother. She did this, she did this, she did this. And then you tell him she was talking to me. I was beyond being roasted. She told me. And then you tell me she's not going to heaven? 
Na akasema kwa Kiswahili, kwani hiyo mbinguni njia inapita kwa shamba yenu? <laughs> she is laughing is if you show you watching online. And she said if the road to heaven crosses your farm, close it. And then he said kwani hiyo mbinguni yako? Because we had our own confines that were unscriptural. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Then I asked the brother, what happened? Where did this begin? He said, no, there is a kukula's can where it is a man, a pig, and a woman. Is that true? That's the order of the kukulax. And the man he associated with, the messages preached in that church cannot be released by the voice of God. They are with the hell because they know. Boy, we are out. Amen. We are out literally. Amen. When she told me, we want people to stand like you stood. I said on Sunday, I'm going to start again. Amen. And I'm going to stand and say, young man, young woman, religion doesn't marry anyone. It is the love in your heart. Amen. And the young man never raised up their hand. They just said yes. But those who are already married said Amen. <laughs> But those who just say, aha, I'm telling you, you are not still bound by that statement that you can find the people to a message that does not exist. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Here we say, Simon, excuse me, Mkali. Because Baba, I wasn't a few years back. But there you have to. Amen. Someone comes and tells another brother, you are sick because you are attacking Brahma. I asked him. All the people in the hospital today who are sick were ex message believers. And I told him, what about your family? Someone is going to die, you're going to sick. You're going to get sick. Is it because you have left the message? Don't bind people with the fear here. Yeah. I want to tell you today, if I die tomorrow, I've said it. It's on record. Amen. Branham is a false prophet. I've said it. Amen. If I die, it is on. He gave a false claim. Amen. And that's why he preached the message of marriage and divorce. And he even says there, this is going to shock you. He knew what he was doing. Then he does many clowns. People are fighting one another. Why are you fighting? It is him that said it. Mm. This brother said, I only practice. Say what the dead say. And I say what the dead You people don't fight among them. The problem was what the dead say, not the people. What the problem? Is that brother Ken? What was the problem? Nothing. It's just these were message believers, faithful people that he followed what he said. And a woman is nothing. He said a woman is nothing, she's the lowest thing. And then I think his conscience disturbs him. And then he say, I don't mean you sisters. So why don't you go to those who are and tell them? Why are you telling the sisters this? A woman is the greatest thing that ever happened on earth. Amen. God assigned a female attribute to a woman to the church and to Israel. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you are Pharaoh, <laughs> Pharaoh is his wife that goes him to lose all the enemies, lose all the army, because a woman has a power. It is the woman, the wife of David, that caused those prayer of a woman that caused Solomon to sit on the throne. Amen. When the children of Israel had left, the wife of Pharaoh came for a role Pharaoh. Zumbuanga sana When a woman power wana enda Sasa nani atamulia sisi mwami Who will be milking for us and you've left the slaves to go What about my land in Cabenes This is how you are What about my land in Lamu You have left these guys and you disturb here as you a man I'm telling you they have just left The man, the, this man got inspired and followed the Followed the army Follow the children of Israel and all the army of Egypt perished in the water. All of them. And the Pharaoh came at home alone. And the wife was like, What happened to the army? He said, They have all perished. And she looked at him and she like, What am I going to say? And then Pharaoh was like, Nessa <laughs> He escaped and said, "Kuko na mazio kusufu, so wajuni angali mfuto mazio na rudi. Akaka uko hakurudi. 
stay with the women as weak vessels. Weak doesn't mean lack of strength. It means fragile. If you play them wrongly, if you place an egg like this and you are to place, you can't break it. But if you place like this, you will break it. That's a woman. If you place right, there is nothing stronger than a woman on earth. That's what I'm talking about. I need to say that. Amen. Then you have a sister. Then something happened like a sin in the other person. Then you caught her baby out there. When she caught her baby, that man said, I'm not going to marry. So she comes to the message church. She becomes a laughing stock. No man can marry her. Because some culture, you know what I'm talking about. Some culture, if you get, if you get a child outside, you are ruined your life forever. And those are the culture that have found their way on there. Put it. Preached and did the girls in the church. They can't even think of a marriage. Because they are staying under condemnation. Because someone is not liberated. How can he bring freedom when he's not free himself? The sisters who have two children that are told you are doomed forever. Sister, I want to tell you wherever you are, you are not doomed forever. You just need to understand the grace of your husband that will marry you. Not based on who you are, but upon the love of God in his heart for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, brother, that's what I'm talking about. Amen. It's just because men could not get pregnant. That's the only reason you have why you are pinning them down. You are pinning these girls down just because men cannot get pregnant. But they are just as defiled as women, needing grace like I, Simon, and the rest of you. Amen. Amen. You love the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. You are only a man when we see how you treat a woman. It could be your wife, your daughter, your mother, your grandmother, your friend. A woman attribute. If you place somebody upon them the way God did, he said, I'm going to reclaim heaven by the body, the Christ, the body of Christ, the church. Yes. I'm going to claim the earth by Israel and getting married to her. Yes. Did you read that? Then let's go to Ezekiel now. Ezekiel 16. There are some things you just have to say them without postponing for another service. 16. Verse 8. God is now talking to Israel as a husband that is remembering the time of that covenant when they entered into that covenant on the foot of the mountain. And the woman had said, I do. And God said, do not play harlotry with the sticks and wood and the stones. You've read that? Amen. It was a marriage relationship. Oh, my friend is seated there with glasses. Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. Yeah, I swear unto thee and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord, and thou became mine. I don't know how the, the clubs of that friend of mine really resonates with what I'm reading. <laughs> and the people who have always been here cannot take that frequency. Can you read that good free again? with ornaments, and I put bracelets upon thy hands, and a chain on thy neck, and I put a jewel on thy forehead, and earrings in thine ears, and a beautiful crown upon thy head. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was fine linen, and silk, and royal work. Thou didst it fine fur, and honey, and oil, and thou was exceeding Beautiful. You are exceedingly beautiful. Yes. This is a man 
talking about his wife. Amen. He said, when I passed, it was the time of love. And I spread my skirt the way Boaz spread his skirt on Ruth. And I say, and I entered into a covenant with you, and you became mine. Continue, Brother Godfrey. I want to move first now. And thou was exceeding beautiful, and thou didest prosper into a kingdom. Yes. And I Did you understand that? <laughs> prosper in the world. A kingdom. But this was a wife, right? Yes. Continue. And I renown went forth among the heathens. Among the nations. That's right. Heathens for thy beauty. For it was perfect through my comeliness which I had put upon thee. Listen. Uh, Did you get that? Is that the Gentiles? Is that the Gentiles? No. Continue. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty and prayest the hallowed because of thy renown and poorest out thy fornications on everyone that passed by. His it was. And of thy garments thou didst take and deckest thy high places with diverse colors and playest the hallowed thereupon. The like things shall not come, neither shall it be so. Mm -hmm. thou, thou hast also taken thy fair jewels of that of my gold and of my silver, which I have given thee, and made of thyself images of men, this commit worm with them. Okay, stop there. That part you can now read clearly when you say you've forgotten your first love. First, the, the, the churches in the book of Revelation can be poor on the previous relationship with Israel. Amen. Did you get captured that when you come to Adam? You've forgotten your first love. Can we read Ezekiel 30? How weak is thine heart, said the Lord God, seeing thou dost all these things, the work of an imperious, emperor's warish woman, in that thou biddest thine, thine eminent place in the head of every way, Makes thine high place in every street, and has not been, and has now has not been answered a hallowed in thou scornest higher. <laughs> Let me go into that. But as a wife that committed adultery, which it taketh a stranger instead of her husband, they give gift to all whores, but thou givest gift to all the lovers and hirest them, that they may come unto thee on every side of their wood. And the contra is thee from other women. In the Uru Hudums, where is none for thee to commit Hudums, and in that thou givest a reward. It is hard when God has to speak like this about a woman. But I want to tell you, when he did that, he's going to bring her back. Amen. He will need now another blood to do it. Do you understand the purpose of the new covenant? Amen. He will need another blood, hallelujah, Amen. to bring the woman back. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 3. And Jeremiah chapter, Jeremiah chapter 32, Jeremiah chapter 3. Read very fast with me, my brother Godfrey. That's what you have in the Bible. 31, 32, what does it say? 31. No, we've read that already. I want us to Jeremiah chapter 3. <coughs> we are about to finish. Don't worry. Verse 1. Yeah, verse 1. <coughs> Jeremiah 3, 1. They say if a man put away his wife, and she go from him and become another man, shall he return unto her again? Shall not the land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again. Oh God. Oh God. Uh, you read the story of Israel, you weep. God says, shall a woman that is married leave her husband and become another man's wife return? Won't that be something so bad? But for you, return. Amen. Who is returning as a servant or as a wife? Do you see people taking the blessings of the earth? They don't know where they belong. Continue, Brother Godfrey. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places and see where thou hast not been laid with. Do you get that? Amen. Mm -hmm. In the ways hast thou sat for them as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy wounds and with thy wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withholden, and there has been no letter rain, and thou hast 
a world's poor head that will refuse it to be a Time cry unto me, my father, thou art the guide of my youth. Will ye serve his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldest. That's right. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel has done? She is gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there has played the heart. And I say, after she has done all these things, mm, Turn thou unto me. Turn thou unto me. But she returned not, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw when, for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away, and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but when I played the heart of Okay, read there. Verse 14. Turn out backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. I will take you, one of a city, to a family, and I will bring you to Zion. I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. It shall come to pass when you are multiplied and increase in the land in those days, saith the Lord. They shall say no more. The ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall he come to mind, neither shall he remember it, neither shall they visit, neither shall they be done anymore. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it. To the name of the Lord to Jerusalem, neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of the evil heart. In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I give for an inheritance unto their father. That is grace. Amen. God is going to bring this one back. Amen. Is he going to come back as a servant or as a wife? As a wife, so is the bride of Jesus Christ. And here, the wife of Godfrey is saying, That's the place I wanted you to be here. You're in the upper sister, Imagine. You cannot talk of restoration of Israel and she comes back as a servant. The Bible says, the two that God has put together, nothing shall separate them. And God is talking about reconciliation with Israel. You know this deep, amen? amen. We are talking about a family coming back, but we are talking about a union of God with earthly people and a union with God with the heavenly people. Heavenly people have never been a harlot. She's only a virgin. When Paul talked about her, he said, husband, love your wives. But these are great mystery. mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Amen. Now this one was not called a great mystery. Mm -hmm. But this is called a great mystery. Amen. This was not called a heavenly. Amen. 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 God has a family in heaven Amen. and a family on earth. Amen. That Jesus may have premium in both places. Amen. Isaiah 54. I think we're moving one way. Don't you think so? Give him a hand clap for me. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 54. Listen to me. You replacement theology people. One of them I respected him so much until I realized he was not giving money a place. Isaiah 54, verse 5. For thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. Thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Amen. The God of the whole earth shall be called. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken. And grieved in spirit, a wife of youth, when thou refusest, saith the Lord. For a small moment I have forsaken thee. But with the great mercies will I gather thee. In a little rather I hid my face from thee for a moment. But with everlasting kindness, I will have mercy on thee, saith the Lord, thy Redeemer. Amen. 
For this is the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sown, hallelujah, Amen. that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. So I have sown that I will not be wrath with thee, nor rebuke thee, a restoring husband. Amen. So when these guys come to Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, chapter 13, what they tell Jesus, Moses told us, we can write bill of divorcement for our wives. What do you say? These people did not realize when Moses was telling about divorcement, he was telling them this is the condition of your hearts. You are married to another man, but your heart is so hard. That's why God tells a man, you can divorce your wife. But he said it wasn't so. He that he created man and he created one. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. So they are coming around and saying, you know Moses told us. And they are doing the same thing today. They do not realize God was showing them the condition. The person whose marriage was at the gift party was God. Amen. The person that had served a divorce was God. Amen. But now the will the mercy will restore you. Amen. And the son, when he looked at that relationship, the son called Paul. He said, I'm heavy. I lie not. My conscience bears me with this. I think about the children of Israel as the wife of God. But God has established another covenant. You people, do you understand where the next covenant falls? It was a marriage covenant. He says, I ended in a covenant with you. You people are not getting what I'm saying. You're waiting for me to go to Revelation. You go to Revelation 21. The bride has made us. Already. Let me say this and let me repeat. That bride is not you. It is God bringing back his wife. Amen. Did you hear me? Because that's a three relationship. And the word bride that has been used so much in the message, called the message, is a false identity. That's not yours. The word bride of Jesus originated from the Catholic Church. That they wanted the Catholic Church to be the queen of heaven called the bride. There is no word that it calls you the bride. The Bible calls you the body of Christ, residence of heaven. Amen. But when you say, come, I show you the bride. Who was being shown? It was a son that is seeing the mother and the father uniting together. Amen. It was a restoration. Amen. Amen. Let us be glad. That was John. You could have died if you were a son. And you see your father and mother. Ni siku ku siku ile ya kumuki rimoko o moyo ume jatele kunyama always imba siku ku siku restoration. A woman is going to be given back her privileges. Amen. And God even said in the book of Ezekiel, you took my children that I gave back with you and took them under the fire under Molech. You woman, I'm jealousy. I shall be stored with my judgment. Oh, honey. Amen. If the woman in the book of Revelation is the bride, then that will be under the tribulation. Mm. Do you know where she's located? <coughs> Revelation 18. Come and show you the bride, the lamb's wife. It is now the one that was a wife is coming back as a bride. Amen. It is restoration time. Amen. She is now remembering the days of her youth. Amen. She has now remembered the first love. Amen. She's saying, This is the first love of my life. This was the first man I knew. Amen. I'm now coming back. And John is crying. Let us be glad and be merry for the marriage of the Lamb has come. Amen. And the bride has made herself ready. Amen. When we go, you'll understand why that information was given to John and not to Paul. Because Paul was not the apostle of circumcision. He was the gospel. He had the gospel of uncircumcision. It is written in Galatians chapter 2. I will even give you Romans chapter 15, verse 8. The Bible calls Jesus the minister of circumcision. Amen. If Jesus came in the days of Paul, literally in flesh, Peter, Paul, James, and Jesus would stand on one side. Ministers of circumcision. 
And Paul would stand on one side, minister of uncircumcision. Yeah. But when Jesus died there and resurrected, he crossed over to the people of uncircumcision. Yeah. That's how we come in. Yeah. We don't come in by works. No. We yeah. come in by total grace. Yeah. We have a heavenly relationship. Yeah. You know we are finishing? Mm -hmm. I'm so glad I'm finishing. Amen. Finishing quick. This is two hours. Can I go for my 20 minutes now? <laughs> well, you people should say go for three hours because actually you were sick on Friday. For you to stand on the pulpit today. How many hours do you want us to get? <laughs> we want to finish something. We want to congregate our brother. John for the congregation. And Brother John for bringing his mother to be with us. We are happy to see you. Happy to see you. Happy to see you. So that you have a cake. Your victory is our victory. Amen. Whatever good thing that God does in your life, tell us about it. Amen. 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 Even if it's tears, let us cry. Amen. Together. Amen. You look at this woman. She's returning. Amen. What does it mean when Paul says, I've espoused you as a chest virgin to one husband? That was a heavenly relationship. Amen. And the baseline is union. Is it union? Amen. Yeah, we are just using the word, we are using the word marriage, but the word, the baseline and the bottom line is to be united with God. Amen. Heavenly relationship and active relationship. Any of you with people. That's now when you say, and their family in heaven is named Jesus. Amen. And the family on earth Amen. is named Amen. Jesus. Amen. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly presence in Jesus. Amen. We are the ambassadors of heaven to the earth, Amen. but we are the citizens of heaven. Amen. Don't you think they needed another division? <coughs> yes. Amen. Rightly divide relationships. Amen. Will you come next Sunday? Amen. Next Sunday, let's come back and let us see these two families united. Amen. Let us see the family from Canaan uniting with the family in Egypt. Amen. Let us see Ephraim and Manasseh Amen. coming before the family that has come out of Canaan. Amen. Let us see these people uniting because people are using it wrongly today. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want you guys to give a hand clap for the sound man. You have a cold bed in the bed, so you keep some change. The same devil that made me scold by you. He's been putting all these, now he's not putting all there. And you're here. For 20 minutes. Amen. Because two hours are over. Amen. 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 Hosea chapter. Oh God. I don't know. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 62. I think this is clear. Is it clear? You realize why we say the uh, uh, Israel is a Sabbath? There are many categories of people who come to the salvation. I remember one day, my brother James was so sick, and he was to my grandma. And one of my friends, she was a Catholic, but she knew when God is moving. So my brother got so sick, he started vomiting, and there was no one at home in the village, and then the temperature was high, and he was seeing stuff. So my grandmother told me, let us go to a lady called Jatina. So he took my grandma, my, my, my brother, on her bar, he went and knocked. And these people are praying for people knock at their door any time. It was around late in the night, around midnight. So we knocked, and then my grandmother told this woman, my grandson has a problem. And then the woman, she was a friend of the hospital. She prayed. Amen. She prayed. Amen. She prayed. After Amen. prayer, she told my grandmother, I saw some power, someone moving from behind. You know, we went back home holding James. And my grandmother and we were walking back home. Amen. There was no medicine on us. And then you come and tell me, was she a message believer? He had me the moon in the end. I'm going to what the sister said. I'm in a pita kwa shamba yenu. He had me the moon in the end. 
Na Yesu ndio njia. Don't come and say this one is not going. No. I want to tell even those who are seated here. You are going and those who are seated elsewhere. Amen. Let me repeat this. Don't marry because of religion. No. Marry because of a heart of shalom, full of love. Full of love. Amen. Let it be. I can hear someone say, now you want the jug to be full of wine. Amen! Amen. <laughs> because you have no basis, you have no scripture, do you? I ask, is it true? For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And the Gentiles shall see my righteousness, and all kings thy glory. Thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall be. I can hear someone say, you are telling me we are in Revelation chapter 3 verse 12. Yes. Calling the new name is a woman that is getting married. For God is the seventh father will give the new name and self faith. That has nothing to do with you. It is this woman that is receiving a new name, new relationship, new blood of the covenant. Amen. Thou shalt be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no more be damned for second. Is that, is that the church here? Neither shall thy land any more be damned desolate, but thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and thy land Beulah. For the Lord delighted in thee, and the land shall be married. As a young man married a virgin. Did you understand? Are you seeing that relationship? Yes. As a young man married a virgin. God, with his grace, is going to look at this woman called Israel, the harlot, and he's going to call her a virgin. As a young man does what? Married a virgin. So shall thy sons marry thee. As the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over you. Amen. Are you seeing the bridegroom and the bride? Amen. What are you going to do with those scriptures? If you're saying the bride comes, I've put those things even sometimes on this pulpit. Saying Israel is a servant. That's not true. These things was written, still breaking. To show forth there is a heavenly relationship and the earth. Amen. To get to come. Amen. The family in heaven is named Jesus. The family on earth is named Jesus. And then the Bible says, I have set watchmen upon the walls of Jerusalem. We shall never hold their peace day or night. Ye that mention of the Lord, keep not silent. Do you know in the Bible there is no place where it's called the God of Kenneth? Or the God of Himba? Or the God of Intap of Setuba or Pindamunkaba? Those are the names in Isaiah. If I go back to Brazil, not as a messy believer. Not as a pastor of the message. That's a strong declaration. Yeah. If I ever go to any other place, I'm going. I'll not go as a message pastor. No, because I'm not a message believer anymore. That was no message after all. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you. That was a, that's a nice one. <laughs> Verse 11. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. Say to the God of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him, and his word before him. They shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. Thou shalt be called, sought out a city not forsaken. So, people is going to be called a city. Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. Now, brother, if you read for us, we are coming to read the book of Hosea and then finish, uh, finish our time. Because we have, although we have for some more time. Who is going to be a people? A city shall be called a people not for second. Which city is this? Read for us, brother, for the day. Revelation 21. Yeah, 21, verse 1. Go all the way up to that. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven was passed, earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. The, 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 the city is prepared as a, as a bride, I don't know husband. Yes. But don't forget in Isaiah, it says, you shall be called a city, sought out, a city not forsaken. You people. Go ahead. 
And I heard a great voice out of the heaven say, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. Mm -hmm. And God himself shall be with them, mm -hmm. and be their God. Mm -hmm. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall no more death, there, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor cry, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. <sighs> and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega. Look at those attributes God calls himself. Those are not gender attributes. Yes. Alpha and Omega have to do with Israel and God. <clears throat> the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a task of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Thank you. Can you read Revelation 19, verse 7 to 9? 19, 7. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. I want to ask you a question. If you want to use all the things that have been used, people say the child gets raptured in chapter 4. If the child gets raptured in chapter 4, she's supposed to be going out for a marriage. How do we find again in Revelation 21 and 19 the bride has made a ceremony? You see, it doesn't make sense. This has to be another wedding. If you still maintain the child is raptured in chapter 4, she's raptured. To where? To the marriage in the sky. So how come she's found again and he took me? Those things are baseless. The child is not raptured in Revelation chapter 4. The child does not even begin in Revelation chapter 1. It is all Israel. Put that in place. I will share with you. Amen. 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 That has nothing. If God had something of a great importance concerning the church, it would have been revealed to Paul. Sure. Paul is the one who went up and was given the mystery, not John. John says, Paul, you have got the gospel of circumcision. I and Peter and who? Not Peter, he calls it Sifa. I, Sifa and James, the gospel of circumcision. Let us go to the uncircumcised. Let us go to the circumcised and you to the uncircumcised. You see how that would make God a confused kind of a person? Mm -hmm. He takes something that talks about the bride and then puts it to John. What do you do? Right here, as you're coming to an end. I just want to refer. I'm not even going to take the 20 minutes. I'm going to take less than that. I'm going to read the 9. That one said the 9. So it doesn't matter. Okay. Israel is pictured in the book of Hosea. Hosea, God tells Hosea, go and marry. Go and marry the wife of Hudu. Right? Yes. And Hosea marries the wife of Hudu. If you look at the relationship of Israel and God, she was not that a Hudu. A virgin before, who? A nice woman. Then something settled upon her. She started going out. What is the reason of going out? This land have gone into harlotry. So I want it depicted in Simons. Are we together so far? Amen. So this man has got children. Three children born. Jezreel, no army, and no Ruhama. Then in chapter two, God comes and tells, says this. Tell your sisters, Ruhama, and tell your brothers, Amin. Amin means my people. No, Amin means not my people. No, Ruhama means not compassionate, people without mercy. And then he says, now call tell and tell your mother, she's not my wife. Did he say that? <laughs> tell her she's not my wife. Because she has played hollow tree. Then he goes ahead and says, tell your mother, I will lure her in the wilderness. 
I will speak to her comfortably. She will never know me as Lord. She will know me as a husband. Amen. She will forget the previous days. And she will look for a lover. She will never find them. I'm going to put on the places, Brother Philemon. I'm going to put thorns. Mm. She will never go back. Restoration of a woman. Amen. The book of Hosea is the fall and restoration of Israel. Amen. The word hallowed is not attributed to the body. She's only called a virgin. We were hallowed to whom? Whom are we married to? Were we married to God? No. No, we are just people from it. What has brought us? Grace. Amen. Grace has brought us. And that's what I want to tell you. Whether you drank or you didn't drink, you are the same. Some of you are raised in very strong religious homes. And some of you were raised from where there was no religion. When you come to the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are the same. Amen. Amen. You are a new creature in Christ Amen. Jesus. Amen. 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 When God, what God does, go home and read the book of yourself. Can you do that for me? Sure. Well, can you read for us chapter 3? All of it. Yeah. It's only five verses. Hosea chapter 3. You know, that's a whole lesson, but let's just finish it up. Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an address according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel. Are you seeing that the, the subject matter? <laughs> Who look to other gods and now flagons of wine. So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver, for an homa of Bali, and a half homa of Bali. And I said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot, and thou shalt not be for another man. Are you seeing a purchase is taking place? Yes. That this husband is not, he's not moving immediately in relationship with her. Mm. He's suspending her sure. for some time until. So I will also be for thee. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an effort, and without teraphim. Afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord, their God, and David their king, and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. In the latter days. David is going to be a king. But they will stay without a king for a long time. Is that what is happening in Israel today? Yes, and they shall return. Yeah. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Do you know he purchased them with the 15 shekels? Mm. According to the book of Exodus chapter 21, if your cow or an ox kill a servant, a maid servant, you are supposed to bury the owner 30 shekels. That bull of yours killed a woman. So you are supposed to pay for that cost 30 shekels. But this Hosea is buying back his wife with 15, half the price of a servant. You read the story of God and Israel. You say, oh God, I should have been there with John to see the father and the mother coming back. Should have been there to see these people coming and say, let us rejoice for the marriage of the Lamb has come. It's not the Gentile. If it's the Gentile, it means God has violated the marriage covenant. But he says he's going to make a covenant like no blood, but a better covenant. Amen. With the new blood to ratify. Amen. When that blood ratifies, Israel is coming back. Amen. It's the story of love. Amen. It's the story of the fall and restoration. Amen. It's reconciliation. I want you to look at Israel and see the love of God. Amen. We would only talk about Israel and you cry. Amen. That this time God looked at these people, earthly union with God. Amen. Oh God, God bless my brothers. Amen. God bless my brothers and sisters. Amen. God says, there was a time when Jesus Christ in John chapter 3 verse 29, the Bible says very well, John says, he that has the bridegroom is the bride. Now, he that has the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom rejoices to hear the sound of the bridegroom. Yeah. And then God says, here is my joy made full. John calls himself who? The friend of the bridegroom. Who is the bridegroom? Jesus. And then in Matthew 9 verse 14, people ask Jesus, 
How come your disciples do not fast? And then Jesus said, the children of the bride's chamber cannot fast while the bridegroom is with them. When the bridegroom shall withdraw, then they will fast. Who was the children of the bride's chamber? The twelve disciples. Who was the friend of the bridegroom? John. Who was the bridegroom? Jesus. Are you even anywhere there? No. Let us rejoice Amen. for the marriage of the bride has come. And then God is using different names. He's saying the bride, come and show you the bride, the lamb's wife. She's not the bride, but she was the wife. It was the previous relationship that God is renewing. Amen. Can we dedicate our lives to God? Amen. Can we start and say, God, this is what you did with the earthly people. And the Father, you moved all the nations. You say, don't enter into a covenant with them. And we are saying, we are not going to entertain our power, our dominion in our life that is supposed to be removed. Amen. And in place is supposed Amen. to be. Yes. The Bible says, and their place was found no more. Yes. Oh, Amen. brother Amen. and father, you can, whatever you are, you can anoint that scripture. If God will do that to Israel, Oh God, may all the families stand. Amen. May all the families be established. Amen. May the joy of the Lord overtake every family. Amen. May the Lord from this place Amen. strengthen the families. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Amen. husband and wives, Amen. may there be restoration. Amen. Father, we are challenging the world. We are challenging God with the scriptures. Amen. If Israel is coming back, Amen. everything is going to come back. Amen. Amen. And I want to tell you the covenants of God and the earth are integrated with Israel. That's why she says, You are Bura, you are Hephzibah, you are Lamb shall be married. Amen. Amen. God's family on earth and God's family in heaven. Amen. With the purpose of the heaven and the earth, Amen. bringing the unions together to the people. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you. Amen. Those who are listening to us, may God bless you. Amen. May He protect you. Amen. Our children, your children, Amen. your husband, your wife. Amen. Let us go. Let us go to others. And our relationship with Christ is called greater mystery. Amen. Amen. Someone was asking, which kind of prophet do you like in the Old Testament? I've got the one that I love. Hosea. I love Hosea so much. I want to just, how does it feel, Hosea, when your wife was coming back from the prophet? You know, you went to the prophet, sang there, and then brought the woman and brought her back and washed her. He washed this woman by the water. Because a believing husband sanctifies a believing wife. A believing, and a believing wife is sanctified by a husband. This is a great mystery. Husbands, love your wives Amen. as Christ loved the church. Amen. While you were yet sinners, he died for us. Amen. And he established a relationship. Amen. There is no relationship like it on earth. Amen. And I finish by saying, brother, there is a new heaven because of you. Amen. The program to bring the new heaven is because of you. Amen. The program to bring the new earth is because of Israel. Amen. And God has loved you. And I'm not telling you a woman for a second. You have never been for a second. Amen. Someone who puts the attributes of a halal on you is messing you up. When the Bible in the book of Revelation talks about the woman prostitute, that prostitute was a symbol of the past life of Israel. Yeah. Although that woman is there, but it's a symbol of her past life. Yeah. It is Israel that fell into halal We never did. Yeah. We were just sinners saved by grace. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You have forgotten your first love. Amen. Brother, you don't forget your first love. Amen. Can you imagine what God said to Israel? That you shall look and pursue for those lovers. You will never find them. Amen. The ways you use are put thorns. You will stand there, you won't find. And the Bible says in the book of Hosea, she would say, I will go back to my former husband. Oh, thank God for Elijah. Amen. Elijah is going to soften their hearts. Amen. Moses is coming again. To tell them there is a new covenant. Amen. Because the same Moses led them in the first covenant, stood with Jesus on the Mount Transfiguration. He knew of the second covenant. Amen. Huh? Amen. Moses is going to come without a veil. Amen. And when he comes without a veil, they shall be turned to the Lord. Amen. He was there at the foot when Israel said, I do. Amen. And Moses will be here again when Israel will say, I do. Amen. Amen. 
and they will be married forever. Yeah. The Bible says, I will espouse. Can you read that scripture? That's our last scripture we are reading. Oh verse 4. For second chapter 2, verse 4. And I will not, verse 5. For their mother had played her Lord. She has conceived them, conceived them, had done shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers. That give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, my oil and my drink. Therefore, behold, I will head up her thy way with thorns. And I will make a wall, and shall not find her path. And shall follow after her lovers, but shall not overtake them. She shall seek them, but shall not find them. They shall be, they, then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband. For then will see the better with me than now. For she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold, and which she, she prepared for Baal. Then I will return and take away my corn in the time thereof, and my wine in thy season. Therefore I will recover my wool and my flax. Amen. Then verse 15, I will give her vineyards from hence, and the value of Acre for a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth. As in the days when she came out of the land of yes. Egypt. It shall be at that day, said the Lord, that thou shalt not call me Ishi. Thou shalt call me Ishi. Ishi means husband. And shall not call me no more Bali. For I will take away the names of Bali out of her mouth. And they shall no more be remembered by their name. In that day I will make a covenant for them with the beasts. May God remove those bad names out of our mouth. Amen. Those poor confessions we've made Amen. on the things we're coming from. May we confess Amen. the new name, Amen. the new relationship. Amen. We were sinners, but we are now saved. Amen. And say, I will be. There's that scripture I want you to give it for me if you can get it. Be told you have it. And thank you. Thank you. And I will be betroth thee unto me forever. Yeah, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercy. And I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know the Lord. And I'll come to pass in that day, I will hear the Lord. I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth. Amen. <laughs> Do you see a restoration that has taken place? Amen. After this restoration is done, heaven and earth will be one. Amen. It will be one. Amen. Israel, it will just be one person that was a sinner saved by grace. Amen. It is finished. Amen. The story of God's love. Amen. God, may you remove all the bad out of our lives. Amen. Remove wrong confession out of our lives. Father, Father restore Lord Jesus Christ, oh Father, the enemy has taken Amen. from relationship. Lord. Amen. Father, we are looking at your relationship with the nation of Israel. Amen. And then, Father, we see John crying. Then we see John rejoicing. Amen. He knows the earth is coming back. Amen. He knew the mother is coming back. Amen. Father, we see, we feel the heaviness of Paul. Amen. We feel the heaviness of the people. Amen. That woman that has cried for her family, for her children, Lord, Amen. for her husband, Lord. That's husband that has cried on God. Until it's becoming a loving stock in the radios, mm. in television in this country. Mm. Oh, Father, people are playing, oh God. Mm. People are joking over a broken family, mm. a separate family, Lord. Mm. But oh, Father, you not heal the relationship. Mm. May you heal the relationship of your people. Mm. May you turn them loose, oh Father. Mm. We appreciate you, Lord. Mm. We see the symbolism, oh Father, mm. of the earthly relationship, oh God. Mm. And this we say, you are our God, Father. Mm. We see how you dealt with the nation of Israel. Mm. How you draw, oh Father, people are AI, Amen. how you drove King Sihon, Amen. how you drove King Og, for the children to recapture the Amen. place, Amen. place of strength, Amen. place of stronghold, oh God. Sure. May you do this for your people today. Amen. Father, may these places, Amen. dominions and principality and power, Amen. go away, oh God, Amen. that we can stand in the strength of Amen. our confession. Amen. Father, I commit all these people into your hands. Just one person, more. and tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. You have a promise in your heart. You've been watering for the years. Oh, Father, these are your people, Lord. They are taking their identity in heaven, Lord. They are taking their way, oh God. Oh, Father, Lord Jesus Christ. Their eternal life has been written in, uh, in, in Titus 1, 1 up to 2. Father, that was revealed, oh God, that has come upon your people. Father, Lord, may you wipe their tears, Lord. 
that are living on this other earth, Father, with the challenges of God. Amen. May you remember them today, Father. Father, the devil is defeated. Amen. The devil, Jesus. Father, is busted Jesus. out of wrong relationship. Lord, Amen. we are restoring your people, Lord Jesus. Jesus. We are speaking peace to your people, Amen. Father. Amen. We are speaking help, Lord God. God. Supply goodness to your people, Father. Amen. Those who are listening here today, Amen. even on the net of Father, Amen. we speak peace of Father. Amen. We speak supernatural, Lord. Amen. We speak new strength of Father Amen. for your people, Lord God. And I say thank you to your wife. We appreciate you, Lord. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We want to thank you, Father, for our brother John Hedekon. Father, Lord God, this Father, Lord, passed away when he was a young man. But even Father, through his mother, Lord, you help him, Father, to fill the university. Bless my brother, Lord Jesus. Make him fruitful, Lord God. We celebrate this day with him, Lord God. Bless your people here today. Those who are listening to me today, we need to make a decision, Lord. Bless them, even Father. Heal us, even Father, in everything, Lord God. We sanctify your name in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.